and welcome to On The Margins. My name is Sarah Barnes Humphrey, founder and host of Let's Talk Supply Chain, here again with my sidekick. Yeah. Can I call you a yeah, sidekick? Yeah, let's do it. <laughs> Batman and Robin. <laughs> Batman. Wingman. Okay, Batman and Robin, I got it. Wingman, that's actually a really, really good one. Okay, let's that, do it. What movie does that go with? It's, uh, it's uh, Goose. Right. It's Top Gun. A Top Gun, there Come it on. is, there it is. All right, with my wingman, MBK. And FK, AKA Goose. Uh, it probably shows that I'm a little older. Is that did I just reveal age here? Anyway, you may have. Great to be here, Sarah. Always a pleasure. Uh, yeah, my name is Michael van Keulen, MVK. I've been with Cooper for five years. And uh, yeah, just excited to be here as always, and uh, let's go with it. Yeah, so this episode was recorded a couple of months ago at Inspire, and lots of exciting things were happening. We had the supply chain experience that kicked off, yeah. and a lot of leaders got, were able to connect and talk about product innovation, product vision, and I think it was an exciting time for the team, customers, new customers potential customers yeah right yeah it's just it's just such a great opportunity to connect with the community and and realize that look at the end of the day whether you're in retail fmcg in financial it doesn't matter we're all trying to solve the same type of problems and so yeah it's just always a good reminder that we're all in this thing together absolutely now um in july like this is july this is peak season mm. right so what do you think about what's going to happen if people paused manufacturing a few months ago mm. we might be in trouble for holiday yeah we could be we could see some very similar situations as we saw during the very early start of the pandemic where massive backlogs uh clogging in the on ocean freight carriers and uh, yeah, that, that we could we could be in into some some uh, some challenges in the supply chain for sure. Yeah, uh, with a lot of backlog to your point and uh, and some similar uh, challenges on uh, in Long Beach in in California. Yeah, let's hope not. Hope not. Hopefully, right. we've resolved this this whole discussion Everything. in the next. 30 days or so that'd be nice yeah and ramp it back up and not mm. everybody has to ship everything yeah. by air freight because yeah. we don't want that either no no right? no all right don't. well it's time to talk about ai and process improvement with our guest today andrea Andre andrea welcome to the show how are you thank you thank you for having me great i'm doing well so, so tell everybody who you are and what you do uh andrea casella i'm responsible for procure to pay at turo Awesome, and you two know each other. I think. Just a little bit, you know. I, I actually said earlier already, but I'll do it again, <laughs> Andre. I like. So I think I am the only person <laughs> in the entire world that has ever been picked up by an Uber for free without paying for it. And actually, did I pay for lunch at the time? You might have. I think I paid. So I kind of paid for lunch <laughs> to kind of compensate that it was a free yes. Uber. But of course, you you've been with Uber as well, another great Cooper customer. And, right. uh, but look, I've known you for years. This is long overdue. How, and so how did I'm you super. Meet? I honestly, it, it must have been at an Inspire. We, we both speak Dutch, right? And, and Dutch. whenever I, I heard that, uh, I love to practice my Dutch. So uh, <laughs> it's a language <laughs> flex. Yeah, <laughs> love it. Well, don't do that here because we might not understand. No, let's not do that. We'll All do right. that later. I think bar. you've got the first question for Andre. Oh, I, the first question was coming from me. <laughs> so, so uh, Andre, like one of the things you've been in procurement supply chain for a very long period of time. Um, but what are some of the biggest challenges that you're you're focusing on right now, and 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 what do you what do you you know what what are you working on? Yeah, so I think the most uh, interesting challenges is how do you completely get rid of manual work, right? Mm. As, uh, mm. Specifically, if you deep dive into the area of invoice to pay, right? Invoice processing, invoice troubleshooting. Um, there's still a lot of manual work that, that gets done and we're going through such a transformative period where AI can essentially be inserted in so many of these process steps that you want to do one thing is uh, get in as quick as you can, totally. right? Mm -hmm. So AI uh, offers you the ability to uh, transform that manual work into you know, a kind of a digital uh, AI workforce, uh, an actor that uh, is able to extract and process the data on behalf of people. And, you know, the human in the loop is not going anywhere uh, soon. Uh, you still have the chance to validate the data. You yeah. still wanna kind of make sure that it looks right, but there's also, you know, great tools that offer you the confidence level. Uh, mm -hmm. You're gonna have 80% that is green, great, I'm not gonna touch it, and then you're gonna have some yellow and red where 
the human still intervenes and uh, takes steps which will then help uh, later down uh, the mm -hmm. road in preventing that. Yeah, yeah totally. I think it's just going to look a little bit differently how humans are going to interact with the technology and the AI. They say with technology comes three new jobs for humans. Yeah. Right. Well, I think history has shown that, right? I mean, we, we started using Excel. It's not like all of a sudden, you know, no, we now had the power and the data and the ability to run, like, I mean, it, it just was an accelerator. Mm -hmm. And the same applies to, you know, platforms like source to pay. Like mm -hmm. now I no longer am stuck in trying to figure out where my spend is and right. who I'm spending with. And no, I have the data, take out the manual work and I can drive more value. Yeah, That's I just got to figure out the prompts. Like, I got to figure out That's what props cute. to right. use, <laughs> right? I think that's my downfall. Um, do you have an example that you can maybe share with us about how you're using AI and to help, you know, improve some of your processes? Well, there's, it can be applicable to many. I think one that we're heavily investing in is the actual invoice processing, mm. uh, just because that's the biggest, you know, it's, it's a heavy transactional area. There's already a lot that can be done through the Cooper supplier portal, but that that can't just cover everything. So uh, that is one area that we're starting with. We're going and in, getting into also accounting area where recon and uh, uh, accruals could be yeah. um, could could work could be done for those as well. And uh, the opportunities are endless, even in the contract space, right? Contracts come in all kinds of sorts and forms. And if you have a way to synthesize that and make it a unique format where you have all your key data fields lined up and unified, it's, it makes everything so much easier. I got to figure that out. I, I yeah. have read so many contracts <laughs> and I have to figure out how to use AI for that. Okay. For sure. And the well, uh, well, we, 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 uh, we, we may know someone <laughs> that can actually help you with that. <laughs> Starts with a C. <laughs> Spoiler. <laughs> um, good. So, so one of the things, uh, Andrea, and of course, again, you know, we've known each other and we've talked about so many different things over the years, but we also know that, you know, that, like it, it, the garbage in, garbage out concept applies. It applies today. It applied 10 years ago. And I think it will continue to apply. And we've always believed in the best data makes for the best AI. I, I think that the, the, the question is, and we heard Lee talk about it this morning as well, is we know AI is here. AI is going to fundamentally change us. But mm -hmm. what's, what are some of these gaps that, that you've seen, data quality, uh, the, the, the struggles that you've had? And, and, and what are some maybe some of the tips and tricks that you have to to start resolving those. Yeah, so I think data is it's super important. You, you you can't fix it if you can't measure it, right? So mm. uh, especially in large transactional volumes, you you have very large data to deal with. Uh, you may have you know multiple entities, multiple transaction types. Just the fact of being able to uh, produce uh, you know signed off and uh, and 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 uh, accurate reporting is key. Uh, reporting can be volume metrics, it can be cycle time, uh, it can be performance productivity metrics, it can be uh, cost per transaction. All of them matter uh, depending on what you're trying to measure. And most importantly, um, if, you, if you're running a project that is aiming at improving any of those KPIs, you just want to make sure that that gets tracked along the way to measure its success. Totally. Mm -hmm. So reliable data, uh, easy to get data, uh, hopefully, you know, uh, dashboards that are uh, live, that contain live data are extremely important for yeah. decision making. And it helps you repivot if you see that, you know, you're you're trying to channel your uh, procurement in, in, in uh, through some of the channels or your invoicing in others and it's not working, uh, data will tell you where you have to repivot or re-strategize. Yeah, and it's especially what you said, live, in the moment, accurate, reliable data versus what we used to do back in the olden days was analyze, look in the rear view mirror and go, well, that was not a good idea. <laughs> and then by the time you want to react to that data, it's already outdated and you have to do it all over again, right? I mean, that's where the really the power of technology, of course, comes into play. You kind of want to make sure that it's certified. Yeah, data totally. Data, right? yeah. I think the one challenge we may have, though, is hu if we bring in human bias to the data. Because the data can provide us with the outcomes, but if the human bias gets involved before we, we share that outcome with somebody else, and maybe we're not comfortable with it, mm. that's what we have to be careful with, I think.
right? We've got to be able to teach our teams and our leaders to take our bias out and really trust the data that's coming through. I agree. I think that data doesn't lie, but there is a story behind the numbers mm -hmm. and that narrative could could make an impact. Yeah. 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 So talk to us about efficiency and optimization. What does that mean? Is it about cost? Is it about speed? Is it about risk? Maybe it's about compliance. Yeah. What so does I, that mean to you? I think it's it's all of them, really. Uh, I Whenever I join a new company, I always like to assess where things are at, right? Transactionally, but also process-wise and availability of data. And uh, I think we always should strive for best in class, right? Uh, and maybe you're not going to get there, or maybe that's the blue sky view. But just showing what best in class top performing organizations uh, KPI look like, it raises awareness. Mm -hmm. it, it, it provides to leadership uh, a, a baseline that could be quite critical and say like, we're not doing well at all in the maturity curve. This is where we uh, strive to get to. And, and data uh, helps with that. KPIs are extremely important. Uh, because it helps you craft not just a very end state vision, but also what are the quick wins or the, you know, the, the, the low hanging fruits that you're going to uh, address along the way so that you one, gain credibility and two, uh, you book some quick wins and you, you actually show that you're doing and addressing the issues. Yeah, and some of these are hard to quantify, right? Like uh, the oh, biggest yeah. challenge I've had in my entire career was how to explain to a CFO the, the cost of risk or the importance of risk right and, and, it's, and, and what's the value like why are we talking about this yeah so I think uh, cycle time is extremely important like are how are you approving your invoices on time or are there delays any delay in invoice approval or service receipt confirmation could delay a payment and then you've got suppliers yeah. that hit you with penalties so there's up and downstream impact yeah on cycle time only and alone. And I think the greatness of Coupa is that it offers you insights into the community, right? So what are, how are you doing yeah. um, against uh, your industry peers yeah. into, into yeah. that? Yeah. So yeah, yeah it's, it's metrics don't lie, but it's, it's sometimes quantifying them without the data is, is hard. And like I said, I, I've always tr struggled explaining to CFOs why it's important to have not single sourcing, but dual sourcing as an example. Right. It's yeah. not always easy because they're like, well, we just consolidate it and put it all under one roof and we get better <laughs> pricing. I'm like, yeah, but if that factory burns down, mm -hmm. knock on wood, where are we going to get our stuff from? Right. Mm -hmm. Hey, <laughs> so another question, and I know you've always been at the forefront of digital and, but where, where do you see technology coming into play? What are some of the best practices? What are maybe some of the, you know, the, 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 the game changers, if you will, that, that you've seen, like, how, how, do you, how are you thinking about that? Yeah, so I think it kind of ties back <laughs> to your question before. Uh, one, one other measurement is definitely cost per transaction, right? So when we, you know, 10 years ago, 15 years ago, there was a lot of manual or semi-manual processes that involved a lot of humans and a lot of cost. Right. And the, we live in such a transformative period where, you know, technologies almost become redundant after a year. But essentially what they all do is, uh, technology is an enabler to do transactions yeah. faster, quicker, better, also hitting on compliance, right? Mm -hmm. And within, uh, with waterproof uh, workflows. Right. So I think uh, technology is the enabler to allow you to process your transactions better, to have a better user experience. Ultimately, that increases your adoption. It increases compliance. Uh, you have internal satisfaction from your user base that is very tech savvy and wants the experience to be good. Uh, and you have uh, suppliers, which uh, whom transactioning becomes cheaper, better, with greater visibility, and much more seamless. Yeah. yeah. Well, and with all the information that's sort of coming at leaders today, you have to be able to digest the information, the news, right? The trends. What is coming up? How do you do that? You're going to have to use technology to be able yeah, to right. consume all of that content and ideas and breaking totally. news and all that kind of stuff, especially right now, you know, tariffs, and yeah. all that kind of stuff. Yeah. How do you stay on top of it? I don't know how people are doing it. Um, one last question. What do you think is one thing leaders should sort of be thinking about or doing differently right now? I think dare to take some of the risks and kind of there to, like to work uh, more hands-free or at least low touch in transactioning. Again, the human is always in the loop. Uh, 
you know, there's proven technologies that are at a fraction of a cost uh, that replace, uh, you know, manual work. Um, we're talking about allowing individuals to do more value-added activities and more strate strategic work. Mm -hmm. uh, so it's an improvement from that, that as well. Uh, it's never too late to start. So I think there's there's that hesitation sometimes, right? Or uh, another point is if you have a catalog, an Amazon catalog, should I open it up to my own organization? I think the answer is yes. You can always put filters and limits or you can also assign it to one buying group, but just dare to uh, apply, uh, you know, new technologies, of course, do the right, you know, reference calls and uh, understand how others are using it, mm -hmm. but they could be uh, truly game changing. Yeah, yeah, and it's it's like what you said, and we heard Lee talk about it this morning as well, is how do we get to do higher value work, right? right? How do we drive more value? Well, it is about innovation, it is about relationship, it is about category management, it is about those types of, of, of activities in procurement, but there's no way you're going to get there unless you got your foundation, right? Yeah. It it's, it's, sounds super basic. But that is still the ongoing challenge for us and and maybe not so much for ourselves but it's how do we story tell this to an executive team i mm -hmm. literally just walked out of a meeting where i literally talked about exactly what i just said and so it's, it's spot on well said yeah absolutely well and also digital transformation is only 20 percent technology oh absolutely 80 percent is the story right it's the change management That's true. it's how are we going to talk about this and move forward as a team yeah using the technology as a tool. Yeah, it's like buying a car and leaving it on the parking lot. Terrible idea. <laughs> Terrible right? idea. You gotta use it, right? <laughs> Absolutely, because otherwise you're gonna be left behind or left in the parking lot. Which is probably right? not a good idea. <laughs> <laughs> Definitely not a good idea. Well, Andrea, thank you so much for joining us here for On The Margins. Thank you for having me. It was thank a pleasure. You. <laughs> thank you. Now it's time for trivia. So get your answers ready, put them in the comments, and you can win a pickleball set from Koopa. And I can't wait to see this month's winner.